Welcome, everyone, to the Student Ministry Podcast. My name is Steve Cullum, and here we are at episode 31, and this is a special podcast because we have none other than my wife joining us today for the podcast. Her name is Yvette, and I'm so excited for you guys to hear uh, about her story, about where God has taken her, and how she uh, just partners with me in the ministry, and how she reaches out and and really connects with the girls in our group, and uh, there's so much to her story. Um, but before we get into that, we do want to thank our sponsors. Um, they are like here every month, back to back to back, just you know pouring out and uh, and just making this podcast happen. So first of all, we want to thank Work Camp N E. That's W O R K C A M P N E dot com. Make sure you check out their website, especially if you are looking for a service based mission trip that's based right in the United States. Um, they have most of their trips are uh, in the Northeast. And so if you are in the North re- Northeastern United States, uh, it's right in your backyard. If you want to travel to the Northeast, great opportunities. They've also been able to uh, branch out the last couple of years and have a couple of opportunities in the summer um, in Illinois as well. So make sure you check them out. And here's the deal. They also do private trips and private uh, experiences for your youth group as well. So maybe one of the works, the weeks that they have doesn't work out for your group, make sure you contact them because they'll also do a private uh, sort of setup for your group. So if you're looking for a, just an amazing experience for your students to get out and serve their local community and, and really connect and, and do some awesome stuff, make sure you check out their website at WORKCAMPNE.com. And we also want to thank our combined sponsorship between the National Network of Youth Ministries and Reach Youth New England. The National Network is at uh, youthworkers.net and the uh, Reach New Youth New England uh, website is Reach Youth NE. Com. And uh, both of these are excellent organizations based around connecting youth workers. Really, it's it's kind of what this podcast is about as well, because we want to, to connect you with other youth workers out there and let you hear their stories and, and learn from each other. And that's what these organizations are all about as well, and doing that in the local context. So maybe you've been trying to do this whole youth ministry thing on your own, and you've been trying to, to work with the students in your area, and and maybe you're struggling, or maybe you're doing an awesome job. It, it doesn't matter. We need to connect, and we need to lean upon each other and, and help each other out and uh, be there for prayer support and encouragement and accountability and all that sort of thing. So make sure you check out both of these websites uh, if you have not connected with other youth workers in your area. So youthworkers.net and reachyouthne.com. Make sure you check them out. Uh, if nothing else, just to say thank you for uh, for sponsoring the Student Ministry Podcast. And uh, also thanks to WorkCamp NE uh, for their sponsorship as well. So as I said earlier, this is a special podcast because I have my wife on this episode. Hey, Yvette. How's it going? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> So this is so this is a little awkward for us because we are sitting you know in the same room. Normally, uh, most of the other youth pastors and youth workers that I interview are you know on Skype or something like that. And uh, this is Yvette's first time on a podcast, so she's kind of she's you know feeling a little awkward about it and everything. We're just like sitting in, across the room staring at each other. Um, but uh, I know a lot of people uh, maybe don't know who you are yet. Um, a lot of people just know you as my wife, as my wife, um, and that sort of thing. So. Um, um, I start. I'll start off with the same question I ask a lot of people um, on on this podcast. Uh, tell us your story. What's what's God done in your life to bring you to the point where you are today? So when I was growing up, um, I knew about God. I knew uh, who God was, but I didn't have a relationship with Him. So as I was growing up, I remember my dad telling me about God, and before my sister and I would go to sleep at night, He'd um, come into our room and read us a Bible story uh, to help us go to sleep. And he'd 
oftentimes read out of the King James Version. Um, so um, as a little girl, I just didn't really understand the wording in that version, so I didn't always comprehend exactly what he was saying. And then oftentimes, since he was reading us Bible stories before we went to bed, a lot of times I had fall asleep uh, before he actually got to the end. So I knew a lot of the beginning of Bible stories, but I didn't know the endings of them. Um, so that was... Um, Yeah, so that was a little challenging for me, I guess, um, with understanding the Bible. So um, as I went through middle school and high school, um, yeah, I knew about God. I just didn't have that relationship with Him. And it wasn't until my senior year of high school uh, when my friends start going in different directions with their lives and the direction I wanted to go with my life, uh, where I really felt that emptiness and that void in my life. Um, I just felt like something was missing. And I just knew that if life was all about partying and guys, um, I just knew I wasn't very interested in life, if that's all it was. Um, So that's when I started praying um, and just talking to God and and just letting him know, like, I, I just wasn't happy with life if this is what it's all about. And I was just praying to him to help me to see what life is all about, um, to help me meet other um, people out there who are Christians who could help me figure out how to walk with him, um, how to live life with him. Um, so, yeah, senior year of high school was pretty rough because I was um, just starting into my faith and um, letting go of the old life that I was living. And then when I was a freshman in college, uh, that's actually when I decided to get baptized. And my sophomore year of college, that's when I went to Eastern Illinois University and I got involved with Christian Campus House, which is a really awesome ministry on that campus. And that's when I really started to grow in my faith and I never looked back on the old life that I used to live. Cool. So a lot of people that I've had on, um, not all the time, but a lot of times uh, youth workers and youth pastors um, have had an experience about, you know, with youth group themselves. And that was kind of one of the things that kind of pulled them into youth work. You really didn't have any sort of youth group experience growing up, did you? No, I, I went to youth group a few times. I remember going to one retreat, but I didn't have a lot of experience going to youth group. So it wasn't really until your college campus ministry that really God started to work in your heart. Um, tell us a little bit about that experience and what was that was all about. So my sophomore year of college, I transferred to Eastern Illinois University from a community college. And when I started going to Eastern, I immediately got involved with Christian Campus House, which is an amazing um, college ministry on that campus. And... From day one, I met incredible um, Christians who were following hard after God, and immediately I felt accepted. I felt like I belonged. Um, I knew that was going to be a great place for me to grow in my relationship with God while I was in college. And um, as soon as I could, I joined small groups. So um, I would do a Bible study once a week, and I'd do a Bethmore study uh, once a week. And I really fell in love with the Bethmore studies. And I did a Bethmore study every semester um, of my college career at Eastern Illinois University. Um, and so during my time there, I also eventually started leading um Bethmore groups. I also participated in different ministries they offered, and I ended up leading the missions ministry while I was there. Um, While I was in college, I took a mission trip to Haiti, and that was my first mission trip out of the country, and I did a lot of mission trips within the country while I was in college as well. Um, So I pretty much just did everything I possibly could. I even uh, participated in a prison ministry, and that's actually where I shared my testimony for the first time was in an all-male prison, <laughs> So, which you wouldn't think would be the best place to share your testimony for the first time, but it actually ended up being like the best experience for me, and it's something that only God would have known um, 
he's the only one that would have been like, yeah, when he bet shares her testimony for the first time, it should be at a male prison. <laughs> um, but when I got there, I was extremely nervous. I was still getting used to public speaking and never shared my story before. So it was just a very vulnerable moment for me. And then to do it in front of all these males in a prison <laughs> was just a little awkward when I started. But um, a lot of the prisoners were just incredibly encouraging. And as I started my story, um, they were getting on their feet. They were clapping, cheering for me. They were saying, like, praise God, amen, like, preach it, sister. <laughs> and so um, the more they encouraged me, the more I just felt comfortable and I was able to share my story. And they came up to me afterwards and just um, continued to encourage me. So it ended up being a really great experience. Um, but, yeah, so when I was at Eastern and involved with Christian Campus House, it, it really helped me to grow in my faith um, in so many ways. Um, we even had a midweek Bible study that Roger Songer, he was the camp, the main campus minister at the time that he always did. And, um, and I just learned so much from him. I learned so much from all the leaders there and all the ministers there and just so much about the Bible and my faith and who God is. And, um, yeah, it was an amazing experience. Cool. So I know, like you said, you got involved in, and leading and, and things like that. I know from just talking to you, you know, um, <laughs> other times <laughs> that, that, uh, student leadership was huge and that played a role in you eventually kind of pursuing campus ministry for a little bit. How did that all transpire? Oh, okay. So when I was getting ready to graduate, so my BA is in journalism. And so, um, just a couple months before graduation, I was still unsure of what I wanted to do after graduation. Um, and there was different things I had thought of and I looked into and just nothing was falling into place. And so I actually went up to Roger Songer, who was the main minister at the time, and um, just told him the dilemma I was in and just how I was looking into different jobs and just wasn't working out. And um, I just wasn't really sure what God wanted for my future. And I actually told him if, the, if he knew of any job openings that he thought would be a good fit for me to let me know. And I actually was unaware of this at the time, but the campus ministry was looking for um, the first male and female um, campus minister interns. Um, so when I mentioned that to him, I think it sparked something within him and he started considering me as a possibility um, for that internship. So um, before I graduated, um, the staff had um, had come to me offering the position of female campus minister intern, and I accepted it. And so I became the first female campus minister intern for Christian Campus House um, at Eastern Illinois University. And so I did that for a year. And during that time, I oversaw um, the females in different ministry areas. I mentored them, um, just walked beside them um, as they grew in their faith. Um, sometimes we'd read like Christian books together. We'd just talk about what's going on in their lives. And um, I would just do my best to, to help them in their walk with Christ. Um, in their leadership positions and help them to grow in the areas that they were leading. Cool. And then that kind of sparked some more stuff in your heart about ministry and continued to uh, follow him to Lincoln, where we met uh, mm -hmm. for the first time. So um, why, why pursue seminary after, you know, going to get your journalism degree? Yeah, so when I was in that internship, um, I saw how much counseling was a part of ministry um, as I met with the girls and mentored them. Um, just their stories, their histories, backgrounds came out, um, and some of them had went through some pretty hard times, some pretty difficult situations, and I just didn't really feel as equipped as I want to be um, in helping them through those times with my journalism degree. <laughs> and then also, I didn't have um, like a degree in Bible or ministry or anything like that. And I just didn't feel as equipped as I wanted to be in those areas either. And I really loved um, college ministry. And so um, when it came time 
for my internship to end and thinking about the next steps um, when I was praying about it, I just felt like God was leading me to pursue pursue a master's. Um, so I felt him leading me to seminary and I felt him leading me to Lincoln uh, Christian University or actually yeah. <laughs> Lincoln yeah. Christian Seminary at the time at yeah. Lincoln Christian University. Um, so I, I went to learn more about ministry and the Bible, counseling. And at that time, um, I was pursuing a career in campus ministry. And then I came along. <laughs> <laughs> and then Steve came. <laughs> so so you at that point, you had never really um, done anything with youth group at all, had very little experience yourself. And uh, and pretty much had campus ministry experience. Loved working with college students. And uh, well, spoiler alert: um, you're now a small group leader for middle school and high school, and have been for a number of years now. <laughs> How in the world did that all happen? I know, but the world out there has no clue what how that all connected together. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess I, I will say I think it was my junior year of college. I did do an internship with the youth group at my home church for a summer. However, <laughs> um, I thought I was going to be working with high schoolers, but I ended up working with um, like seniors who were going to be <laughs> in college. Basically so, college ministry, yeah, so even it was though you're supposed to be doing youth ministry. College yeah. ministry. <laughs> so I had that little bit of background, but yeah, it was mostly students going into college. Um, so with youth ministry, uh, let's see here. So when I went to Lincoln... Uh, <laughs> There's a whole story here. <laughs> yeah. but. We don't have to tell the whole story about how we met or anything. But but basically, yeah. like uh, So yeah. I guess basically. We ended up dating. Yeah, Steve, so. <laughs> Steve and I ended up dating. Um, maybe we'll share yeah. the story of how yeah. we met later sometime in another podcast. Um, but yeah, so we ended up dating and Steve... This is something Steve does with pretty much everyone he ever meets. But he's always like, like, have you ever helped out in youth ministry? Oh, you haven't. Like, do you think you want to try it out sometime? <laughs> um, so he did that whole thing with me. And I was like, huh. I was like, I've never done it. I wasn't really sure if the students would like me. I was like, I've always worked with college kids. Just like, interrupt. I, I don't do that with everybody I date. <laughs> like, that, that, that was not my philosophy in dating, just to get more volunteers in the youth ministry. That's, that's definitely not how it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I didn't mean to make it come across <laughs> like that. Um, but yeah, so he ended up just asking me like if that's something I've ever considered, would I enjoy it, that kind of stuff. Um, I wasn't really sure. Like I said, I worked with college students in the past. wasn't sure how well um, I'd do with high schoolers, but I was willing to give it a shot. So I went with Steve. I, I think VBS was the first time I yeah, helped so. out. So, yeah, so I, it was even a little younger. It, mm-hmm. You know, kids ministry at the time. Yeah. So I helped out with VBS, and then eventually I started helping out with, with youth group, and then I got involved with the group, um, I think it was freshman girls. Yeah. So, and that's when it all started. And so I haven't stopped working with the youth ever since. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you even had some experiences um, with working at Sojourn in Boston as mm-hmm. well, um, Sojourn Collegiate Ministries. Also, again, the first intern they've had, so you kind of mm-hmm. like paved the way for interns in campus ministry a little bit. Um, and and we got the opportunity, um, you know, if that was offered um, a, a position with them, but and that's something we had to, to really pray through early on because she was feeling, um, you know, especially, you know, most of, you know, that, that portion of her life before we met called into campus ministry. And I was feeling called into student ministry and, all of a sudden, we found ourselves at a, a smaller new church that couldn't, you know, afford to have both of us on staff working in different areas. And so she got an offer in another church, and we we're like, oh, what do we do in this mm-hmm. moment? And so that was a, a big prayer point for us, um, but eventually decided that that wouldn't be a, a good move for us to be at two different churches. Mm-hmm. And so um, so you continue to basically just uh, continue to serve within the student ministry and um, serve with some high school students. And then... Mm-hmm. And then uh, after they graduated, (laughs) what happened there? (laughs) Yeah, it seemed like God was just slowly breaking me into student (laughs) ministry. So, yeah, so when we um, were out in New Hampshire at Rockingham Christian Church, the last church that we were at, um, like Steve was saying, like I— I started with high schoolers, so I did high school high schoolers at Lincoln at Jefferson or Jeff Street. 
Yep, Jefferson Street Christian Church. Jefferson Street Christian Church. (laughs) And then I did high schoolers at Rockingham Christian Church. But yeah, like when that group graduated, um, I ended up going down the middle school. And so I wasn't really sure about that either, but (laughs) that's where the need was. Um, So I went and I wasn't really sure how it was going to work out because I was like, I did college, college ministry. That worked out well branched out to high school ministry. They ended up liking me, even though I wasn't sure if they would at first, but they did. Um, And then I wasn't sure. I was like, I don't know how middle school is going to go. Like, I don't know if they're going to like me. Um, But I got with my group of girls um, at RCC. So I started with them in sixth grade Um, and they were great. Like it was, yeah, I had a great time with those girls um, in sixth grade and and they ended up liking me. So that was good. (laughs) Um, And then I ended up staying with them all the way through middle school and then stuck with them all the way through high school. Um, And I stayed with them actually until they graduated high school. So yeah, and it ended up being one of the best experiences of my life walking through those middle school and high school years with the same group. We really bonded, got to know each other. Um, I got to walk beside them through some difficult times. And um, yeah, it was a really great experience. Cool. Cool. So, so the next question I have for you, it basically just revolves around what does your ministry look like? What would you, how would you say, um, you know, as, as a volunteer, as a youth pastor's wife, what's, what does your ministry look like? So right now, so we're at LifeBridge Christian Church, um, here in Colorado. So, um, Steve just got the position at that church last summer. And so I started out with um, sixth grade girls. So my goal is to walk through middle school and high school with those girls, like I did my last small group. Um, so now those girls are going into seventh grade. So I'm leading that small group. So um, with them, you know, once a week at youth group, um, I'm with them leading their group. But then I also um, go on retreats with them, camp, um, we do um, our own little events. So, like, I do a, an annual sleepover that they all come to um, and, like, game nights. So I just try to do some fun things with them just to build a uh, relationship with them. Um, I support them at their, um, you know, their sporting events or whatever um, activities they're involved in. I try to go see them and cheer them on. Um yeah, so I just try to be there with them, um, do the one-on-ones, um, try to get to know them better and just develop those relationships. And then, so that's what I do with my small group. Uh, but then I also, um, as a youth minister's wife, like I try to get to know all the students. So I also help out um, when I can with like high school events. Um, like I went on a mission trip to the Dominican Republic this year uh, with the high schoolers, which was really great. Um, lots of awesome high school students in our youth group. So that was really good to get to know them and serve beside them. Um, And then, yeah, I just try to do functions as much as I can. And we just got into our uh, new rental house. (laughs) So we have a house now. We're out of an apartment. Um, So I'm sure we'll be hosting lots of events with the students um, at our place just to get to know them better. Yeah, cool. It was uh, actually my first ever... um podcast guest, Aaron Stetson, a good friend of mine. Um, we both went to his workshop at a youth ministry um, conference back in New England. And I remember him saying this, the, probably the first time that I've ever heard anybody say this, because he was talking about bivocational ministry. And uh, and he said something about like, if if your wife also works, like it's also considered bivocational because we can't necessarily make it on just the, the pastor's salary alone. And so um, I know that meant a lot to us. Like mm-hmm. all of a sudden, when we heard him say that, that made sense all to all of a sudden to us, and um, and so even though like I'm the one, <laughs> you know, that gets the paycheck officially from the church, um, I know that we we see ourselves as dual leaders in this mm-hmm. in this ministry. Um, you just also work some part time stuff on the side um, to to help with you know pay the bills and that sort of thing, but but we really see this as a partnership, and and I, I know a lot of people out there they they don't have that sort of circumstance, and and that's that's okay but like can you tell me like just tell people out there that are listening 
like how much you value the fact that we are fully view ourselves as full partners in this ministry. Yeah. I mean, I I think it's great that you see me as that and you don't like see me as just (laughs) like another volunteer, Mm -hmm. but you see me as a full on partner. Um, I appreciate that because yeah, the ministry means a lot to me. The students mean a lot to me. Um, that's where my heart is, is in ministry. So, um, so to know that we're doing it together, we're serving together, we're partners in ministry. Yeah. It's just really meaningful to me. Yeah. And it's been cool the times where we have, you know, like on a regular youth group night, you know, I may be speaking on stage, you're leading your small group or whatever. And sometimes we don't get to interact that much, but there have been times where we've been able to actually serve alongside mm-hmm. each other. I know that that's been really fun for us to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and even do this podcast together, <laughs> even though I had to look convince you a little bit and like, oh yeah, you got to talk to a microphone. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's been really fun to, to really just partner in this ministry together. Mm-hmm. Together. And I think that's something that I don't think I ever realized I would enjoy so much mm-hmm. until I finally got into it. And I'm, I'm so glad that God has given me that opportunity to, to have a full partner in this and not have to do it alone. Mm-hmm. That's yep. been really cool. Um, also, I know you ha- you are so much a believer in staying with your girls all the way through. Mm-hmm. You did that in New Hampshire. I know your goal is to do that again here in Colorado with, mm-hmm. with these girls. Um, you've already made it one year. you got several more to go. Um, it's gonna, we're going to blink, and they're going to graduate. <laughs> uh, I know. That's what it's going to happen. But uh, why, why is it so important for you to stay with those girls all the way through? Yeah, so I, yeah, I find that to be extremely important just because... Um, yeah, it just takes time to build a deep relationship with someone. And I think if you're just with them for a year and then you switch to a different group, like, I just don't think, I mean, for some people they can develop that really strong, deep relationship in a year. But I think if you can stay with someone all the way from middle school to high school, like that relationship is just extremely deep. It's really rooted. Um, it's solid. Um, and then in those times, that's when the students are going to feel comfortable coming to you with anything, like anything and everything, because by that point, you're basically family with each other. <laughs> like you're more than just a, a volunteer leading a small group, like you're um, someone they've known for half their life almost. <laughs> so um, so it's just, yeah, I think it just helps you to go deeper. It helps you to to work through those messy parts of life together and feel comfortable with it. Um, more comfortable than if there was a leader there only for a year. Yeah. Um, so, so I just see the benefit of just really getting to know someone in that time and just having it develop more into a family relationship than, than just a, a volunteer serving in a small group. Yeah. Yeah. It did. I mean, it really helps you to take ownership over that group and to really pastor the, those students that are in your group. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, it means something different when you're able to, to stay with them. And, and like you said, I mean, if you're not able to, if there's other circumstances mm-hmm. or you just really feel led to like seventh grade boys and that's it, mm-hmm. um, then by all means stick with those seventh grade boys as that's the way that, you know, God has shaped and wired you. But if it's, if you're able to, um, there's mm-hmm. so much benefit that, that you've been able to see with staying with those, with mm-hmm. those students all the way through. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I know, yeah, some people aren't able to to follow a group that long or maybe it's just not something that God has led them to do. Maybe you only feel led to lead them just through middle school or just through high school and really feel like that's where God gifted you. And I think that's great. I mean, I think it really just comes down to, to doing what you feel like God has led you to do. And all of our stories are different. All of our personalities are different. What God calls us to is different. So, um, but if God does call you to to stay with them from middle school to high school. I think it's a huge blessing to be able to do that and watch them grow in their faith and um, just grow um, in their character and all of that. Just being able to witness all of that um, as you go through life with them is just a huge blessing. That's cool. And and so just to talk to another you know, side of things, you know, as, as my partner, as my wife in this, um, we've talked a lot of times about, you know, how does what does that really look like on a regular basis? And and I remember us talking early on about at the very least, um, I know you're a whole lot more gifted to speak to girls than I am. <laughs> and I'm more gifted gifted to speak to guys. And there's just that natural connection that I can make with a guy and that you can make with a girl. And so um, what's that been like for just being kind of that that voice of our of our family to the the girls in the youth group um how has how's that connection 
you know, been? Well, I guess I'll say, um, just to do a little background on this. Um, so back when Steve and I were engaged and um, I had served in, in at Sojourn in the college ministry and Steve was doing youth ministry, um, I just remember praying a lot about where God wanted my future to go. Um, if he wanted me to stay in college ministry or to serve alongside Steve um, in student ministry. And I just remember one night at youth group, just looking at all the students running around and, and there's just so many of them. And I felt overwhelmed just looking at them. I was just, and I was just talking to God and I was just like, God, there's just so many students. How can we reach them all? And I felt like God said that, that, we would reach them all by Steve and I serving together. And I felt like he was saying, like, I could really reach the girls and Steve could really reach the guys. Um, and, of course, there's some crossover there, <laughs> of, of course. course. Um, but I really felt like that's where it started. And so um, so now that we are serving together in ministry and have been for, for years and years, um, yeah, like, I guess with, I guess, well, I guess what were you asking again? <laughs> <laughs> Just about like how how is that what's that look like and how does that work, you know, ministering to the girls and how's that how's that been for you? Okay. Yeah. Um yeah, so ministering to the girls, like I, I love that. Um I just love building that connection with them and just having those one-on-one times and just even those group times. And, um, I guess, yeah, just being able to, to speak into the, speak into their lives and speak life into their lives. Um, yeah, I just really I think enjoy that. What I see as well is I, I know you appreciated so much the, the women in your campus ministry that spoke into your life. Mm-hmm. And I, and I see you, you know, just basically passing that on. Mm-hmm. As well, and I know even through your, like your Beth Moore studies, even though she wasn't a you know, official, <laughs> you know, like walking beside you kind of yeah. mentor, she kind of mentored you along the way as well. Yeah. And so I think you know we've talked about how you you want to do that for for others as well, and, and be mm-hmm. there for for other girls um, like those other ones that have come before you were were there for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, a big thing for me, um, like I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, is that growing up, like I, I wasn't a Christian, so I didn't have. Christian mentors um, speaking into my life. I didn't. I can't look back and point out a person um, who really stepped into my life, who was a really strong Christian, who's who helped me understand the Bible and understand God, um, other than my parents. So when I uh, start going to Christian Campus House, that's when I met women who who helped me grow in my faith and um, just walked beside me and led me. And it was just a really powerful experience. And that's something that I wanted to do for for other women and for students. I want to be there um, speaking into their lives and helping them, um, I guess, just always pointing them to Christ. Like, I just want to be that person in their life that points them to Christ, no matter what they're going through, no matter how difficult life is or what struggles they're facing. Um, I just want to be that person that's encouraging them and just helping them grow in their faith, um, no matter where they are in life. Cool. Cool. So I know that you've been, you know, volunteering within ministries, uh, campus ministries and student ministries for years now. Um, do you have a couple tips maybe that uh, you'd like to, to share with a podcast audience? I know um, maybe one of those like you could talk about is is a little more, you know, we, we hit on it quite a bit earlier, but is the, the importance of staying with a group if you can um, as a volunteer? Because I know a lot of people that are listening are not you know, youth pastors, not the paid person that's, that's leading the ministry. Maybe they're volunteering as the leader in a small church, or maybe they are a small group leader, just like you, or maybe, um, they're also a, a spouse of, of the youth pastor. And, um, so maybe kind of, maybe a couple tips that have to do, you know, around those sort of things. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think consistency is huge in student ministry. Um, There are a lot of students out there who just don't have consistency in their lives. So just the more we can stay with our students and be there for them, um, you know, the better it is for them just to have that consistency. So if there are other parts of their lives that aren't going the way they want or maybe falling apart in ways, at least they always know, okay, when I go to youth group, you know, Yvette's always, she's always going to be there. She's going to be my leader. Um, That's something that remains the same no matter what else is going on in my life. So that's another reason why 
And I see the importance of um, sticking with a small group from middle school through high school. Um, It's just that consistency piece and how God can work in the consistency. Um, So, yeah, so I think that's a great thing for leaders to do if it's possible for them and if that's something they feel like God's leading them to. Um, I guess another tip is just be be open, be genuine, be real, even with the tough stuff. Um, So I'm very open and transparent with my girls about my life, my past struggles, how I overcame them, um, and like struggles I'm currently dealing with and how I'm working on them. Um, if it's a really raw part of my life where, <laughs> where um, I feel a little lost myself, like I'll wait until I get um, get through it a little bit. Yeah, I know one of the things you're really big on is boundaries and, yeah. and knowing when to share and when not to share. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really important for you to share, but you also need to know when not to share. So that's nice. Yeah, boundaries are so important because I think it... It is really good to be open, transparent, real, genuine, all that stuff. Like, and I try to be as much as I can for my girls. But sometimes, yeah, like as an adult, there are some things that I don't need to share with my students. Or maybe I can share with them, but just not at that point. Maybe it just needs to come a little bit later. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I don't want to hand my mess over to a student. (laughs) That's not their responsibility. They're not your small group leader. (laughs) They're not my small group leader. Um, So if something's really messy in my life um, and I just don't have it together very well, um, you know, that's when I'll turn to Steve and he'll help me through it or, you know, my own mentors or, you know, Christian friends who will kind of help me sort through that mess. And then when I get it together a little bit better, then (laughs) then I'll be open to sharing that with my girls and, you know, and I'll tell them the process. I'll tell them the process. I talk to Steve about this. I talk to my Christian friends about it. I talk to my mentors and I'll walk them through what I went through. So then if they go through something like that or something similar, they'll understand the process that they need to take to get through that mess in their own lives. Cool. Cool. Well, I know that I have been uh, just privileged to have you on the podcast today, but <laughs> even though I get to Thank hang out you. with you all the time. Um, but I know our podcast listeners have, have loved listening to you and your story and seeing you know, how God has just uh, shaped and taken your life um, probably in directions that you never imagined. Yep. Uh, so <laughs> so um, if people out there want to hear more from you and want to get in contact with you, maybe asking some follow-up questions or even, you know, I know you're, you're open to, you know, um, conversations, but also like speaking and things like that you're trying to get into and, and that sort of thing. And you're, you're writing some and doing, mm-hmm. you know, working on some books and everything. What is the best way for people to, to contact you online? Uh, so people can email me. Uh, my email is Yvette Cullum at gmail.com. So Yvette is Y-V-E-T-T-E and then Cullum, C-U-L-L-U-M and then at Gmail. Um, I'm also on Twitter. Um, so that's another way people can get in contact with me. Yep. And I'll put all the, uh, the links to that in the show notes as well. And, um, I'm, I'm excited about this new endeavor for you. You've been writing mm-hmm. and, uh, and this not necessarily connected to ministry, but I want to give you a chance to plug, um, something <laughs> that's going to be hopefully down the line fairly soon. We'll see. Um, but what have you been working on for the last year or so? So God laid it on my heart about a year ago um, to write a young adult fantasy book. Uh, So that's something I've been working on. Uh, So right now I have the whole rough draft of my manuscript completed. And so I'm in the editing process right now and eventually will work towards getting an agent and getting published. Um, But yeah, I'm really excited about this book. I as I as I was writing it, I felt like it was a really great story. <laughs> I was really into it, so I hope um, future readers will be really into it as well. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to see what God does with that because it was something that I it had always been a big dream of mine to write a book. Never would have pursued it, though, unless God told me to go for it, and he did. So I'm really excited to see how he uses it. Yeah, and I know it's something we're we're pretty excited about as well, and seeing what God does with it in the end. You know, it's not necessarily a Christian story, but. Mm-hmm. Um, 
people have asked me, it's just like, Oh, is it a Christian story? I was like, well, no, I don't think so. But it's, it's, I'm sure it has Christian themes in there because you're the one writing it. <laughs> and uh, I know, you know, how you think and, and everything. Mm-hmm. And I know that there's probably some, some themes that are in there. And so hopefully, you know, even our readers, uh, our listeners, um, will become readers of your, of your book. Mm-hmm. And, uh, maybe, you know, some of their, their, you know, students in their youth group will be yeah, reading your book and that'd be kind of cool. So. Um, yeah. It's a, it's a clean book. Um, not necessarily <laughs> Christian, but, um, yeah, I'm just excited to, to get it out there. And I think it, as people read it, like it, my big hope is to just connect with the people that read the book and, and just be able to, to speak into their lives too. So yeah. we'll cool. see what happens. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. <laughs> and, uh, thanks for, for bearing with me. And I know it was little, you know, you weren't too thrilled about it, but I know people want to hear the, your story. And, uh, that's one of the cool things that I get to do. And you know this, cause I tell you all the time, but, um, it's just to hear people's stories. And I've heard your story so many times mm-hmm. and, and everything. And I know other people need to hear it, um, to hear what God's done in your life. So thanks so much for, for being on the podcast. Well, thanks for having me on. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I know I'm a little biased, but uh, I, I think her story is great, and um, and I hopefully you did too. I hope you really enjoyed hearing about what God has been doing in Yvette's life and how He brought her to where she is today, and what He continues to do in her life to to really reach out to, to teenage girls and and maybe you know what what He's going to do through her book and and other things as well. And uh, it's just been awesome to to partner with her in ministry. And um, so if you if you have any sort of questions, I know she would love to hear from you. So make sure you do reach out to her uh, via email or Twitter. And uh, speaking of Twitter, if you have not followed the Student Ministry Podcast on Twitter yet, make sure you do that. We are at Stu Min Pod. That's S T U M I N P O D. And uh, you can also follow me here at, um, on on Twitter as well. And uh, I'm just at at, at Steve Cullum. That's uh, S T E V E C U L L U M. And um, make sure you send you know in ideas especially if you have some some people that you would like for us to interview on future podcasts, make sure you send that in some suggestions and uh, we would love to have that. And also, if you have not sh- subscribed and you have not shared this with other people, make sure you do that. Uh, that just helps us get the word out about these amazing stories and uh, it lets other people find the podcast as well. And uh, that's kind of how we grow is, is by you um, subscribing and sharing it with others. Uh, and that would be awesome. And in addition to that, if you enjoy what you've been hearing you know, over the last couple of years of this podcast, or maybe you're just finding it today, make sure you leave a positive comment on your favorite uh, podcast app. That would be awesome. Um, so iTunes, uh, Stitcher, uh, whatever you listen to at Podbean, whatever, wherever you listen, make sure you leave a, a positive comment if you do enjoy it. And that'd be uh, just fantastic for us to just kind of rise up and uh, help other people find this podcast and hear these great stories from other youth workers. So um, we do want to thank our sponsors once again. Again, WorkCamp NE. Their website is WORKCAMPNE.com. The National Network of Youth Ministries, whose website is YouthWorkers.net, and Reach Youth New England, whose website is ReachYouthNE.com. We thank them so much for their sponsorship of the Student Ministry Podcast and for helping uh, bring this podcast to you guys uh, every month. Um, again, thank you so much for tuning in to this month's episode of the Student Ministry Podcast, and we'll see you next time. Until then, may God bless your ministry.